This video is going to be about tangent vectors and normal vectors. This is where we're really starting to get into kind of the calculus stuff about, about param parameterizing surfaces. So let S be a surface and let X not Y not Z not be on that surface and let P be the tangent plane to the surface at that point. Then the normal vector to S, really a normal vector to S at the point X not Y not Z not is the normal vector for the tangent plane P. And the set of tangent vectors is the set of vectors on the tangent plane P. So really the thing that we're, the things that we're defining here would be the normal vector for the, uh, whoops. The things we're defining here are uh, the normal vector to S at the point X naught, Y naught, Z naught and the set of tangent vectors. That, 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 that's really what we're defining here. Okay, so there are basically two different ways that, uh, that a surface can be defined. One is as an equation f of x, y, z equals zero. So let's look at this, Let, let's look at uh, normal vectors and tangent vectors for a surface defined like this. So first, what are some examples? Um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 25 equals zero. This would be a sphere of radius five centered at the origin. This is one example. This function would be f of x, y, z, but also things like z equals x squared plus y squared is in this, is in this category because we can just write this as z minus x squared minus y squared is equal to zero, and then this function here would be f of x, y, z. <clears throat> okay, so let's answer the question uh, that I'm asking here, which is we have some surface, f of x, y, z is equal to zero, and we have some point x naught, y naught, z naught that lies on the surface. So in other words, that's saying that f of x naught, y naught, z naught is equal to zero. We want to describe how we find the tangent plane, the normal vector, and the tangent vectors. So we've seen this before. So we know that the normal vector is going to be the gradient of f evaluated at x zero, y zero, z zero. This is the normal vector. And I'm just going to call this a, b, c. Okay, but remember, uh, the, the formula would be this is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. This is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. This is the partial derivative of f with respect to z. All of these partial derivatives evaluated at the point x naught, y naught, z naught. But I'm just going to use a, b, c. <clears throat> so then we know that the equation or an equation for the, for the tangent plane would be a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero is equal to zero. This is just the general equation for a plane um, that has normal vector a, b, c and goes through the point x naught, y naught, z naught. Okay, so we've done two things. We've found the tangent plane and the normal vector. The normal vector is a, b, c, which is given by this formula. The equation that I just wrote down is the tangent plane, or the norm, uh, yeah, the tangent plane. And now we want to find tangent vectors. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, let p0 equal the point x0, y0, z0, and let's say that q1 and q2 are any two points on the plane. Okay, Q1 and Q2 are any two points on the plane. Uh, they're not the same, and neither one of them are equal to P0. Then the vector V1, if we call this the vector P0, Q1, and the vector V2, P0, Q2, these are two tangent vectors. V1 and V2 are two tangent vectors. Okay, and they're not parallel to each other, so they're two different tangent vectors. So what this means is all tangent vectors 
um, to the surface at the point x naught y naught z naught are linear combinations of v1 and v2. Um, in other words, they have the form c1, that's a constant, times v1, plus c2 times v2. Okay, and so this way we're able to find the tangent vectors. Okay, so when we have a surface that's given as the zero set of an equation, then it's somewhat easy to find the tangent plane and the normal vector. The more difficult part is finding the two, sorry, uh, what, what, I should, what I meant to say was when we're given a surface in the form f of x, y, z equals zero, the easier thing is to find the normal vector and the tangent plane, and the slightly trickier thing is to find the, the tangent vectors because we just kind of have to find two points on the plane. Okay, not, not horrible, but not as straightforward. Okay, uh, so now let's say we have a surface that is given by a parameterization. That's the other way that a surface can be described. The, the, uh, maybe there's more ways, but the two, the two biggest ways are as a zero set of a function and as a parameterization. So this would be something like r of s t is equal to s t s squared plus t squared being the parameterization of the paraboloid. Okay, and so now we want to do the same thing. We want to describe how to find the tangent plane, the normal vector, and the tangent vectors. <clears throat> now for this, it's actually a little easier to find the tangent vectors. That, that's the easy part for this one. And then the trickier part is to find the normal vector. So let's just, uh, sorry, that's the y-axis. This is the x-axis. This is the z-axis. Going to draw a paraboloid here. Um, like this. Let me draw a few coordinate curves. So I want to think about the paraboloid being parameterized in cylindrical coordinates. So these would be like the curves for fixed uh, S. Let me draw a couple for fixed theta. Okay, so I want to concentrate on, let's say, this point right here, and let's say the blue point is equal to R of S0, T0. Okay, so the green curve and the orange curve, where they intersect, this is going to be at the tangent plane. So notice the following. Notice that if you look, if you hold, or if you hold the, the orange constant, if you hold theta constant, So theta is equal to theta naught, then you get uh, a green curve. Actually, let me use. Sorry, then you get uh, you get the orange curve. R of theta naught, comma s is equal to s cosine theta, s sine theta s squared and theta's constant so let me make write that as theta naught okay so this is a curve uh and s is the variable theta naught is fixed and so we can think about this just as being r prime of theta naught comma s where now we're taking the derivative with respect to s so this is going to be cosine theta naught sine theta naught 2s, and then if we evaluate this at s naught, r prime of theta naught comma s naught is equal to cosine theta naught sine theta naught 2s naught. Now, this notation, that notation isn't so bad, but down here it's, amb is, uh, it's um, ambiguous. So instead of writing r prime, we're going to write the partial derivative of, of r with respect to s, and it means exactly this. It is the derivative with respect to s. So I'm going to change it up here as well. Okay, so this gives a vector, and it gives a vector that is tangent to the, to the orange line, but it is also tangent to the tangent plane. 
because the orange line goes through the tangent plane. The, 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 at, at this blue point, the green curve and the orange curve are tangent to the tangent plane. Okay, now if we look at fixed S0, so S is equal to S0, we're going to have something similar. So the partial derivative of R with respect to T, uh, with respect to theta, I mean, so now, um, now S is fixed, so this is a function of theta. And if we evaluate this at theta, comma s naught what we're going to get is the following so we take the derivative with respect to theta this is minus s naught sine theta s naught cosine theta and then zero okay that would be the tangent vector to the green curve like this vector right here okay so what this tells us then is that Two tangent vectors are the partial derivative of r with respect to s evaluated at this blue point s naught t naught, and the partial derivative of, of r with respect to theta evaluated at the point theta naught s naught. Okay, and this is what's true in general. This, this is how it's going to work in general. Okay, so in general, we can say that one of the tangent vectors, v1, is equal to the partial derivative of r with respect to s evaluated at s0, t0, and v2 is going to be the partial derivative of r with respect to t evaluated at s0, t0. And all tangent vectors are given by c1 v1 plus c2 v2 okay uh, and now so how about the the normal vector well we need a vector remember the normal vector is perpendicular to the plane so v1 and v2 are two linearly independent vectors that lie in the plane so this just means we can take the normal vector to be equal to v1 cross v2 so this is we can take this to be a normal vector and i'm going to give this i'm just going to call this a b c okay that is the normal vector and then the equation for the tangent plane would be a x minus x of s0 t0 so x of s0 t0 is just the x component of r so what i'm saying is r of s t is equal to x of st, y of st, z of st, plus b, y minus y of s0, t0, plus c times z minus z of s0, t0, is equal to zero. And again, this is just the standard equation for a plane. We know the point uh, x of s naught t naught, y of s naught t naught, z of s naught t naught lies on the plane, and a normal vector is abc. This is just the standard equation for a plane given those two pieces of information. Okay, so talking about tangent vectors and normal vectors is really going to let us be able to do calculus on surfaces because we need to be able to basically pretend that surfaces are planes and then do calculus that way and hopefully some of this will make more sense as we look at as we look at more videos um, and these are the you're you're given a surface as the zero set of an equation or you're given a surface as a parameterization usually that's the only two ways surfaces come to you and so these are the ways to find the the various vectors the various normal and tangent vectors